Today we're doing Day 8, Mutually Exclusive and Inclusive Events. By the end of the period, you should be able to find the probabilities of mutually exclusive and inclusive events and understand what these terms mean. Go ahead and read the problem below and look for what's different about it than the problems we've done on past days. Go ahead and pause to take a look at it, and when you have an answer, go ahead and resume the video. If you have resumed the video, you've probably noticed that what's different about this is the word or. And that's what causes this to be in this set of problems. We're looking at the probability of grabbing a coin and it either being a dime or a nickel and finding out what the probability of that is. All right, so we're going to now take a look at what um, these terms actually mean. Mutually exclusive just means that it can't happen at the same time. So listed below are a couple of possibilities of and examples of things that are mutually exclusive. You can't turn right and turn left at the same time. You can't toss a coin and get both heads and tails. And if you pull a card out of a deck, it can't be an ace and a king because those are examples of things that are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. So examples of things that are not mutually exclusive or they're inclusive would be turning left and scratching your head or pulling a king and a heart because it could be the king of hearts. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in picture form. If you look at the picture on the left, you see aces and kings. How many aces are there? How many kings are there? And then think about how many things there are total in the box on the left. How many things are there in this box? So as we said, there are four aces and there are four kings. So total things in that box would simply be 4 plus 4, or 8. Now let's take a look at the box on the right. How many hearts are there? How many kings are there? And how many things are in the box? You might want to pause here to think about it. How many things are in this box? There are 13 hearts and 13 kings. I've heard answers of 16 and 17. Which one's correct? In the box on the left, we added four and four. If we add, we get 17. But how many things are actually in the box? There's 16. So how do we account for that and why does it work? We've got this piece in the middle, the King of Hearts, where it overlaps. So to take care of that, we need to add, uh, subtract 1 from our 17 to get an answer of 16. Keep this in mind as we progress through the slides today. These are the symbols for mutually exclusive events. So if we have the probability of A or B, what we're actually doing is adding the probability of A, which we found in the past, and the probability of B, which we found in the past. And instead of multiplying, we add the answers together. The symbols for this is the symbol for union, which just means um, the same thing as the probability of A or B. If you need to go back to that last slide, feel free. In fact, let's go back to it a second so you can have a chance to write it down. Go ahead and pause here if you need a little more time to write down the symbols. And then we'll go back to the original problem that we looked at earlier. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. This was the one we had up at the very beginning. Go ahead and pause here and see if you can calculate the probabilities. Okay, if you've resumed the slide, you've probably noticed that 
we do have the word or, so it's going to be mutually exclusive. We cannot grab a dime that's also a nickel. So then to calculate the probability, we want to calculate the, the probability of grabbing a dime. And we want to calculate the probability of grabbing a nickel and add those together. Since there are two dimes, our first probability is two out of the total coins. And we have nine total coins. What's the probability of grabbing a nickel? Well, since there are three nickels, we have three out of nine. And so the answer is five out of nine. Let's take a look at the next example. So in this problem, um, we're looking at a sum of seven or a sum of five on a throw of dice. You will probably want to be looking at your dice sheet as you work on this. Go ahead and pause here and see if you can calculate the answer. Take about a minute or two and then resume. As you can see, since we're looking for a throw of two dice, we're only doing this once. And that's what makes this a mutually exclusive event. If you have finished the problem and you're watching um, the, the answer, uh, the answer is about to appear. So we're going to be adding, and the probability of rolling a sum of 7 is 6 out of 36, and a sum of 5 is 4 out of 36. So when we add those together, we get a total of 10 out of 36, and the answer is 5 out of 18. Let's look at this problem a different way. This would be an example of the type of problems we've done the previous days. Notice the words and then. This may, is what makes it like the problems we've done in the past. We're rolling the dice twice. We're looking for a sum of seven on the first roll and then a sum of five on the second. So we have the same probabilities, but instead of adding them, these are the type of problems that we've done in the past where we multiply them. So I just wanted to give you an example of how this would be different than the problems we've looked at um, today. Remember, if you're doing two events, you're multiplying those probabilities. Okay, let's look at a different example. You may want to pause here for a few minutes to um, give this problem a try. Notice there's a keyword here, and that keyword is committee. Remember what that means to do. Go ahead and pause. If you have worked the problem, um, go ahead and take a look at the explanation. Since we have a committee, we're doing a combination. And now think of what the words at least mean. At least means three or four or five men could be on our five person committee. So we have to look at sums of probabilities for three men on the committee, four men on the committee, and five men on the committee. Here is what the answer would look like. Notice we had to add in seven choose two for the women that would be left to fill out the committee. And there is the answer to the problem. Let's take a look at one final example. We have a card drawn from a standard deck, and we want to know the probability that it's a king or a black card. Pause here for a few moments so that you can try this problem. If you're ready to resume, and you're pressing play, the answer is about to show. 
If you're not ready, continue to hit pause. Okay, so when we look at this, we notice we still have the word or, so we need to be adding our probabilities. And we're looking for the probability of a king. Four kings out of a deck, so 52 um, cards in the deck. Four kings out of 52 is our first probability. We're just drawing one king out of a deck of 52. And then for black cards, since half the cards are black, we have 26 out of 52 there. Now let's think about this again. It is mutually, is it mutually exclusive? If you think about it, that answer is going to be no, because two of the kings, half the kings are going to be black face cards. So what do we do with the overlap? If you think back to that first slide, we're going to have to subtract out the overlap. So if you've thought about that, your answer should be 7 out of 13. Okay, now that you've seen some examples, go ahead and practice the, uh, the work with your homework.